Hey guys, so we have just pulled into this bay where we did our first overnight island camping video and um, we pulled up on this turtle who's laying a nest which we're so lucky to see. But yeah, we're going to camp in the boat tonight. I think we're going to stay in this bay so we can just get out of the wind a little bit. Rowan has just shot a beautiful blue bone for dinner which we're going to cook up and show you guys on the boat. Um, we're going to have fish wraps and I think we'll get into a bit more spear fishing tomorrow and yeah we'll just see what we can get. Bone for dinner. Woo. Yay. So we won't be having chips and dip, thankfully. beautiful beaches in the Dampier Archipelago. We've got an amazing sunset happening behind us. We've got that turtle nesting eggs and unfortunately we will not be sleeping on the beach tonight like we were in the last time we shot an episode here. We'll be sleeping in that boat behind us and the reason being that tonight we want to set our alarms to get up at the low tide so we'll be up at 3am in the morning and then we're going to be straight back on the water looking around and possibly going for a night dive and seeing if we can find some tusk fish and some crayfish in the dark. So as much as we'd love to sit around here and enjoy this sunset and pick up on the sand, we'll be getting back in that boat now. We're going to go find a nice sheltered part of the bay where we can cook up dinner. We've either got trout or blue bone on the menu tonight that we just feared. We'll get that fired up, we'll do a catch and cook and then we'll tell you more about what's going on later. Right guys, so now that we've got that anchor in the water, we've just pulled into the bay here. This is where we're going to be setting up camp for the night. It is just about 7pm, we're going to be sleeping here till 3 in the morning when we're going to take off at low tide in the dark. We have some really cool ideas in store for when that comes about, so hopefully we can make something out of that. For now, we're just going to make the most of having this last bit of natural light here. We're going to be getting changed out of my wetsuit. There's my undies there, sorry about waving them around on camera getting all the fish and everything prepped and then we can just focus on the good stuff with you guys so just bear with us for a second and then we'll be back with you Let's hook up what do you got there love all right so Normally in the back of the four-wheel drive or in the boat, this is what we carry with us. I don't have my canopy fed, fit out with anything fancy. It just simply is a few tubs like this where we keep all of our 
essentials, so one's for recovery gear, one's for cooking and all that sort of thing. So this one's our cooking one, pulled it straight out of the ute canopy this afternoon, straight into the boat, so that'll be us to cook dinner. We're going to make some room by putting all the dive gear underneath the floor here. Just to give you guys a bit of an idea of how we make all this work. So that'll go there. This is our little gas cooker here, which we'll fire up in a minute. Thanks, Dad. Cooker. Yep, thanks, Mum and Dad, I think. Yep, Mum and Dad. And dog bags. Boom. And then this cool little thing here. I haven't given this a proper rundown, <laughs> but this is a big... Oh, sorry, a turtle just came up over there. This is a big sight glass for looking over the side of the boat that my Uncle Colin gave me. Best thing that anyone's ever given me, so this thing, instead of having to look over the edge with a mask on, looking for dive spots all the time, I get to this, so I might show you guys this in depth tomorrow when we got some sunlight, but that can go under the floor for now too. Bit of water here. And I think that's probably just about it. And the fins. That should be good. Right, so when we're on the go, this is our go-to travel sort of seasoning and to be honest I quite like it around the house. So in here we've just got some coral trout, freshly shot and filleted. When we're out camping on the boat overnight we like to shoot the smallest possible fish that we legally can and then that way whatever we're cooking up that night we're not wasting. So we don't try to shoot PB fish when we're camping on the boat for the night. So that's the Tendako seasoning there. Just shutting that up. Tupperware container, quick shake. Now that's slightly seasoned. So we'll fire up the cooker and we'll get this underway. So we've got this coral trout sizzling away now. It smells as good as fish could possibly smell. It actually really smells good. Uh, we've pre-prepped everything for fish wraps tonight so that we didn't have to fuss around on the boat tonight and cut up all our veggies and so forth. Now it's probably worth mentioning that this is actually mine and Eden's very first time sleeping on this boat. So the whole purpose of buying this boat and the specific size that we got and the way it's fit out is basically because in my mind this is something I always wanted and obviously Eden's down for the adventure so I bought this boat because I wanted to be able to roll this swag out right here across the floor where we're cooking right now, sleep in it no matter where we are and then be able to still fish, use it sort of as a universal boat and go about it that way. So this is actually the very first time that we've decided to camp in it without roll on the swag out on the islands. So as nice as the islands are to be sleeping on there tonight next to the turtles, this is something I've always dreamed about this moment right here and it feels good to be finally be doing it. And you might have noticed, I don't know how clued on you guys are, but the clip of us lighting this up and pouring the oil in was actually up here on the bait board. But we quickly worked out that having the high centre of gravity there as the boat rocked even slightly, the oil was just sort of coming to the sides and it was almost coming over the top. And it was very scary, so we just put it straight down on the bottom of the floor, sitting on the carpet, it's away from everything fun, we're much safer at the moment. And it's not going to spill oil all over the paint job. Or you. Or me, which would suck. That looks so good. Can't wait to eat that. 
we need the smell cam on. Alright, so we've got all of our ingredients. Um, we just like pre-cut everything at home and put them in these containers to make it way easier. So you gotta have pineapple. Pineapple, lime, cheese, carrot, avo, cucumber, red onion and tomato and lettuce. With the coral trout, of course. Freshly speared, freshly cooked up in the cooker there. In our nice humble boat with the green spinach wraps. I wish we had a bit of mango to put on. And our sauce of choice, if Eden will give you guys a spin of that one. That's our go-to for our fish wraps, coconut sriracha with a bit of sour cream. This is the secret ingredient for fish wraps. Almost as good as mango. Pineapple, if anyone hasn't worked it out. I think it's about as controversial as pineapple on pizza. This adds that tropical touch to your fish wraps. Which fish, tropical, go hand in hand. You might as well take a bite now, eh? Delicious. Hard to go wrong with a fish wrap. We make these probably three nights a week at least, so we fairly know what we're doing and how we like them. Alright, so here it is. Here's our accommodation for while we're on the boat. So we just got a 900 wide, slightly larger than single swag. It's a dome swag rolled out on the floor of the boat. Fits perfectly across the deck, a couple of hundred mil there to spare on the console. And then just the gear that's not getting used right now up and out of the way up there at the front of the boat. So we'll switch it all around and play the juggling act in the morning to sort it all out. I'm just standing on an esky here filming this, but I'm going to jump into bed next to Eden there. And then we'll see you guys in a few hours. wondering why we've woken up this morning and it's not pitch black and we're not out spear fishing in the dark like we said we would it's because we did get up at 3 a.m. we got up with the low tide we had a bit of a look around but unfortunately the wind was up a little bit too much so it was dirtying up the water across the surface and we we're really relying on being able to see straight through that top layer of the water to go scout some fish and crayfish so Instead we just decided to jump back into bed for an extra couple of hours and that was probably the best couple of hours of sleep that we had for the whole night. It wasn't too bad of a night but it's pretty warm up here in the Pilbara in the summer so it was like a warm restless sleep in the swag on the boat and then for some reason yeah those extra couple of hours we got were the better part of it. What we're going to do right now though is we're going to lift the anchor and we're going to go for a cruise to some ground where we're going to go scout for some fish to go spear fishing. I've got the new dive contraption that I've made that I want to run you guys through that's going to help me out big time for my filmmaking, especially spear fishing underwater and it's like having a second person there as a camera person so we'll go get stuck into that. We're going to change up, get into our wetsuits. I'm not sure if Eden's going to jump in with me today or not but we've got the whole morning ahead of us now. The sun's just coming up so we've got everything to look forward to. The boat's packed up, camp's packed up and we'll get underway. So now that we're over where we're going to start the dive for the day, 
I've geared up and I'm ready to jump in, but one thing I want to run you guys through that I keep mentioning is this device here that I've just fabricated. So I've been wondering for a while now how I can go about getting underwater shots from a third person view without actually having somebody else in the water with me because it's one thing to have a dive buddy, it's another thing to ask a dive buddy to point and shoot a camera at you the whole time instead of them having a spear gun or being in the water shooting fish themselves. So what I've made, it's a bit of a monopod here and it's basically just a dumbbell weight with a few plumbing fittings which is what I do for my day job. So I've got some threaded rod on there, some brackets and clamps and so forth, which basically goes to a sticky GoPro mount on the top here. The GoPro is on top in its underwater case. I've then got 10 metres of marine rope here that I've taken off a yabby net. And then at the end of it, which you'll see here, it's just a crab float. So I've got the rope, float, I've got a second float here, a smaller one, which is the same setup as they do when they tie off three ways in a crab pot. And that keeps that rope floating vertically, like that, so that when this is in the water, the rope isn't going to dangle over in front of the camera lens. And then what I'm doing, what you're going to see today with this, is when I'm going to ledges and stuff that I dive, and I know there's fish around, I'll go scout it. And what I'll do is I'll set up the camera first, and I'll try to get a good angle going with this before I make a dive and shoot a fish. That's given that the fish is something like a trout or a blue bone that might be holding its territory. Obviously, if the fish is quick moving and I've got to be quick thinking, I don't have time to mess around with this. But stationary fish on ledges, I think this is a really good thing and it's going to be a game changer for the video. This is obviously just my first prototype and it's going to be improved on from here. But we'll see what we can come up with today using it and hopefully get some good clips going. So I'm just going to chuck the rest of my gear on now and jump in the water and we'll get some fish on board. Well, I'm just going to jump in quickly with the 900 in 7 metres of water. If I see anything I like, I'll get that other camera pass down that I just showed you guys, but we'll see if there's any fish on this ledge. Bad trout on that one. There's a few nice ones down there. I didn't want to miss a shot on that one, so I just took it straight away. But I'll set that camera up. Get back in there, I reckon. Nice job, baby. Oh. It's a good one. Okay, so I don't know how much attention you guys were paying last night or if anybody noticed it, but we are currently out here on a full moon. So with a full moon comes spring tides and diving on a spring tide is a bit of a headache. So I've jumped in and I've just shot the one coral trout, had a bit of a look around on this ground. Nothing else there that I fancy too much. So we're gonna leave it there. The water's dirtied right up while the tide runs and does its thing. So I'm probably gonna take Eden for a fish for maybe the next hour or two and scout some ground at the same time before I get back in the water. So we're gonna go for a cruise now and see if we can find some new ledges and see if anything can take Eden's jig or lure. Getting through 
sore because I hate fishing with spin reels. I much prefer overheads. Oh! That wasn't very graceful, he's very slippery. Alright guys, it's Rowan and Eden coming to you live from the beam bag of the boat. Unfortunately today things haven't worked in our favour and much like any fishing session, anyone that's into fishing knows you can go out there with the best intentions in the world and the perfect game plan and it doesn't always come to fruition so right from the start with us setting an alarm for 3 o'clock this morning and wanted to get up and go out in the dark, the wind was up too high so we scrapped that idea. We stayed in bed and then we jumped back up with the sun and then the wind also came up again pretty quickly in the morning and unfortunately with that it dirtied up the water too much for me to continue on diving. So we haven't been able to find visibility in excess of about two to three metres since this morning, since that very first dive when I shot that coral trout. So I've just been taking Eden around the place and she's just been doing a bit of fishing, uh, a bit of stuff for fun, but nothing too eventful for us, mainly just because of the white caps keeping us away from all of our favourite grounds. So we're going to wrap this one up here. We're just sitting out in the channel in Dampier. We're going to head back into the boat ramp. It's a Sunday afternoon. Go put the boat away, clean it up, all the fun stuff. And then what I think we'll do is next time we want to try the night diving stuff, for a video, we'll do it on neap tides. Even though we won't get as lower height with the water with the low tide, it'll be much more reliable for still water where, where we can actually see through it, shine our torches into it, jump in and all that sort of stuff. So next time Neeps comes around with low wind, that's gonna be the video we make, something similar to this, but the one we actually wanted to do. Aside from that, that's all I've got to say. I don't think Eden's got anything to say, so thanks for watching this one. We had a great time. Plenty learnt from this one. We have much in the pipeline that we want to try out next time, so stay in the loop and we'll see you then.